Well, hello there. Welcome to Scott's Music Cave. This is a Mark 7 alto saxophone. And in today's video, I'm going to show you some tricky little things that I do to these saxophones when I have some key binding. And I kind of talked about this in another video where I, I overhauled one of these and talked about how rods can be flexing after you get your key play out and how to eliminate that that binding because when you have key play a rod cannot be could be straight and and feel and move just fine however once you get that key play out if that rod isn't straight your keys are going to bind that's probably sounds pretty obvious however sometimes you'll have the key off of the horn and the, the rod will go through and it'll spin freely and then you go to put everything back together and then it's not working anymore and sometimes like you the screw isn't all the way in and it's working freely you tighten that screw up and now it's binding and it's it can be frustrating and that's what I'm going to show you how to address in this video let's head over to the shop and get started Okay, this is what I'm dealing with here. I've got an upper stack and this is the rod of the upper stack and it's straight and the first thing I'm noticing is this rod does not just want to drop in. It, it binds up right there and sometimes this, this post here won't be in perfect alignment and this post is just that's the high G post and that's just a little hole to allow the this rod to go through so sometimes you'll get it past that post and it'll it'll go in freely and that's fine then you're good but you can see I'm past that post and this is still not wanting to go in so what I'm going to do next is find a shorter rod and hopefully you have a rod that's from the the instrument that is short enough that you can do this with. If not, you'll have to get some rod stock and either cut a piece or if you have a short enough piece. But if you're lucky, you have a rod that's short enough and you can just get into the, use it in this post. That's a little loose, but that's okay. What I'm going to be looking at is how this post and this post align with this post. And I can already see that it looks like this post is too far this way and this one's too far that way and we can even look down the side here and you can see that rod but you can see that rod is not wanting to line up easily that should kind of float in between both sides of that post and yeah that's too well let's see if we can basically the same thing that rod goes really far to the right and doesn't want to go into the left so that tells me that this post is twisted a little bit you can see I already have my B flat key on there and it is got a lot of key play so I'm guessing maybe this post something took a hit here or it came like that from the factory and then with if it has enough key play it's just going to the keys are going to work and so what I'm going to do is, yeah, so if I turn that post just a little bit, that's probably going to take up that little bit of key play and get that rod to float through. So I'm not going to worry so much about the B-flat key, key play. I want to get this aligned first, and then we can check the B-flat. Once you get the keys on, these posts may need to be aligned a little bit. So, and it's possible that key, a key play could be coming from this post. But let's just align this post here a little bit. Look at it again, just kind of get, get an idea how far I need it to go. And you see, that's just too far over. And I've got a tool that can actually tighten up this 
key plate too so get that rod nice and tight because you can't have that rod moving around with your tight pad work so I'm just going to take these parallel pliers and slightly turn them so probably couldn't even tell that I twisted that any probably because I didn't but yeah definitely it's better to go easy on it you can see that that's pretty centered and let's see how our it looks going the other way yeah it's hard to let's drop the the rod in hopefully this camera wasn't too shaky I, I didn't really think I could put it on a tripod and make it and do this without showing all the angles so yeah look at that drops right in and that's how your post should go and now I do have a little bit of key play or not key play but rod play and I've got a tool that I can swedge these posts and make that go away but yeah that's how your post should go in and just rough it yeah that B flat keys pretty tight I might might actually have to take a little bit of material off that B flat key to make that work so yeah two birds one stone and the, the other thing I wanted to show you was sort of the same type of issue and that's the, with these threads and I mentioned that sometimes you'll go to screw it your your rod in all the way and all of a sudden the key will bind and what can happen there is, and let's see how this one looks. See, that's just a little bit off. So that, that post is not aligned with the other post. So that post needs to be turned the same way that I turned this post. And... You could either grab the side of the post here and twist it or grab the end of the post. You got to be really careful, really firm because you don't want it to slip and round off that the facing of the post. So it's nice to grab the sides of the post, I think, even though you, if, if the, you can damage the finish. So if the finish is super nice, I'll, I'll probably grab it by the facing and try to turn it. But in this case, I'm just going to see if I can give it a little tweak I don't know if that even did anything yeah I'm not gonna do that with one hand let me set the camera down so it wasn't much but hopefully you can see that that's nice and straight so this rod should go yeah that's just I think the. I'm not sure what so this rod should slide in and then just screw in like that by hand. That's that's how a rod should go in. You shouldn't have if if you're having to really crank that screwdriver to get those threads to turn. You've probably got you've got some binding, and that's how I want them to go in. And that's one of the reasons overhauls from a someone that's very thorough can get so expensive because stuff like this is extremely time consuming it's because I could have this on every almost every post where I'm aligning keys and you have the same issues with with pivot screws where that might not be aligned and so you have to line all those to get those keys to work really freely but yeah this is the mark 7 I'm overhauling it's an early one so it does it still has the mark 6 type engraving but 
it is a Mark 7, and it looks pretty good. I had to do some little bit of dent work down here, which turned out okay. But yeah, it's probably, I want to say it's like, a, I don't know, mid-70s, something like that. So that's the video. Definitely more of a technician's technical video. However, hopefully you found it entertaining and kind of get to get into the weeds of this, the technical stuff that, that you don't really get to see or, or maybe even understand when we talk about the get, to, get these horns to feel in place. So um, let me know if you want more videos like this. I know the camera work was a little shaky, but it was hard to get all those angles with, with just on a tripod. I had to have it be able to move that camera and I'll get better at it. But anyways, my name's Scott Reed. I'm a wooden repair technician. I play music professionally. I buy, sell, trade, and collect musical instruments. And now I have a YouTube channel.